Welcome to this virtual conference. My name is Ming Baya. My talk today is entitled with an investigation of feature-based non-rigid registration using Gaussian process. First, I would like to introduce the motivation and contribution of this work briefly. Methods and materials will be described subsequently. Experiments and results will be presented in the following section. And finally, discussion and outlooks will be given. For a wide range of clinical application, feature-based deformable registration approaches are widely employed. On a basic level, feature-based deformation registration algorithms estimate a dense displacement field by interpolating a sparse field, which is given by the corresponding features. Therefore, the choice of the interpolation techniques and its underlying deformation model affects the overall performance of the registration method greatly. One of the state-of-the-art interpolation techniques is B-spline interpolation. It has been widely used for clinical applications, such as registration of breast MR images or intraoperative brain shift compensation. Thin-plate splines are another common choice for deformable image warping and has been applied, for example, for 3D3D registration of vasculature. Gauche process itself is a powerful tool to resolve registration, classification, or interpolation problems. However, in medical image processing, its application to date are limited. In this work, we present a first investigation of the performance of Gaussian process-based interpolation for feature-based deformable registration. To this end, experiments with synthetic, phantom, and clinical data for two different clinical applications are conducted. And now we come to the method and material part. So basically, the goal of non-rigid image registration is to find an optimal dense displacement field V, which maps the source image to the target image. First, in the feature extraction step, two sets of sparse features P and Q are selected from the source and target images. In the subsequent feature mapping step, the source feature set P is updated to a corresponding set P tilde, which is aligned to Q. Consequently, a sparse displacement field can be calculated. And in the last step, the sparse field D is interpolate, interpolated to the dense field V. For this purpose, we use Gaussian process in this work. So, in order to interpolate the dense field from the sparse one, we consider the location of each voxel in the dense field as a multivariant Gaussian random variable. Each vector of the sparse displacement field di for the, vex, for the voxel at the location xi is treated as an observation of the dense field V. According to the definition of Gaussian process, the prior distribution of the special position xi is given as the Gaussian process with mean function m and kernel k. The kernel k represents the special correlation of the displacement vector at a position xi and xj. In this work, we use a squared exponential kernel, and the characteristic of the squared exponential kernel is defined by L and sigma. L here is the so-called length scale of the random variable that controls the smoothness of the kernel and sigma here represents the relationship of the output displacement vectors. Following the GP modeling assumption that the functions of all xi in a set of random variables are jointly Gaussian distributed, 
the dense displacement field can be formulated as a normal distribution, which you can see here in the equation 1, with the mean, mu and covariance k. Consequently, the relationship between the unknown displacement d star at a position x stars and known sparse displacement vectors d at a location x can be expressed in a, uh, as the equation 2. So having the observation d, which is the sparse displacement fields here, the prior GP assumption can be converted into GP posterior via Bayesian inference. Simultaneously, an uncertainty map indicates the mathematical confidence of the estimated displacement vector can be obtained from the diagonal entries of the covariance matrices using the equations 3. Now we come to the experiment and results. In order to evaluate the performance of GP-based vector field interpolation, we conduct quantitative experiments with synthetic data and phantom data for intraoperative brain shift compensation. For the adaptive treatment planning of multi-catheter brachytherapy, a retrospective clinical study is conducted. The hyperparameters L and sigma are estimated with three different methods for each dataset. These are the mean method, negative log marginal likelihood minimization, and discrete grid search. And here we have a short summary of the conducted quantitative experiments. Synthetic, phantom, and clinical data uh, have different resolutions. Since the amount of the feature points on synthetic and the phantom data are significantly higher than those uh, from the clinical data, we only use a part of those feature points in order to ensure a comparable result with clinical data. For phantom data, modified house of distance of the vessel centralized extracted from the warped and target images is calculated. Average intensity difference is used as matrix for synthetic and clinical data. The quantitative results of all experiments conducted show the same trend, namely discrete grid search and B-spline interpolation outperforming mean method and negative log marginal likelihood minimization. Moreover, discrete grid search outperforms B-spline sl method slightly, both for synthetic and clinical data. For phantom data, this creates great search and B spline show comparable results. The qualitative results of the clinical data are presented in Figure 2. The uncertainty map, map visualizes the mathematical confidence of the estimated voxel wise displacements. Hereby, mean and negative log marginally likelihood minimization tend to be overconfident about its own estimation, whereas uh, discrete grid search produce a quite reliable uncertainty map. So to sum up our findings, quantitative results indicate that modeling elastic deformation as a Gaussian process with with squared exponential kernel is a reliable alternative to b spli interpolation in terms of accuracy. Considering both quantitative and qualitative results, we can conclude with the suitable choice of hyperparameters, GP interpolation is comparable with b spli interpolation. More importantly, it produces a confidence map about its own estimation which could be used as a visual guidance for clinicians. However, the limitation of GP-based vector field interpolation is its runtime. So in general, GP belongs to the family of non-parametric methods. For the interpolation of each unknown displacement vector, the entire set of the training data is taken into account. 
Hence, the runtime of GP depends on the size of the sparse displacement vectors and the size of image. In contrast, B spline interpolation is locally controlled, therefore, it is computationally efficient. Consequently, B spline interpolation is suitable for time critical applications such as intraoperative brain shift compensation. Whereas GP-based interpolation is an excellent candidate for applications with lower real-time requirements, such as treatment planning in the radiation therapy. In the subsequent studies, a detailed runtime analysis and comparison with simplate spline will be performed. Furthermore, qualitative studies with clinicians are planned where the clinician will ask to give scores for different interpolation methods. Here we come to the end of this presentation, and thank you for your attention.